When you look ahead to a year from now, um, heading into the next election cycle, um, if Trump wins, if Trump is the nominee of the Republican Party and he wins and he's back in power, what is your life like and what do you think the, the, the noble, patriotic, righteous fight is to save the country at that point? Uh, I, I don't even want to imagine uh, a situation where he has won. I think we have to do everything we can um, to stop him in terms of, again, the kinds of things we've been talking about, working in a very nonpartisan fashion. But I also, Rachel, think about it from the perspective of, of my kids. And, you know, there was a moment right after uh, January 6th where I was having dinner with my husband and, and our two youngest kids, um, who happened to be our sons. And, and I looked at my sons across the dinner table and, and I had this realization, you know, I grew up in a country where I didn't have to wonder if we were going to have a peaceful transfer of power in mm -hmm. the United States. And all of a sudden it occurred to me, my God, maybe they won't be able to say the same thing. And, and that is why it's so fundamentally important that we, we ensure Democrats, independents, Republicans, that we, we work together, we vote together, we make clear that Donald Trump is not an acceptable alternative. He is not the lesser of two evils. He is a completely unfit man for office. He's already shown us what he would do, and he can never be near the Oval Office again. It sounds like you really don't want to think about what resistance or fighting for your country or trying to hold on to democracy looks like with him in power. I mean, you won't you won't go there. Well, we're, we're going to be successful at making sure that he's not, uh, not elected president again. Let me ask you one last question. Um, and I mean this, I think, with the uh, coming at it from the understanding that I think I garnered from your book and from what I've come to understand about kind of your spirit about these things, um, which is that, you know, after you got voted out of your Republican leadership job in Washington, it was very clear you were going to lose your seat in Congress as well. And you didn't quit. You decided you were going to make them vote you out and not make it any easier for them. Um, but it would have made it a lot easier for you, too. Why did you make that decision? I don't, I don't think it would have made it easier um, because at the end of the day, the, the question really is, you know, what's more important here? And, and to me, there was no world in which you would say maintaining this House seat matters more than um, standing up for truth. Uh, and it became clear that in order to, to stay in leadership, I was going to have to um, tell Donald Trump's lies, and I wasn't willing to do that. But, but it, it, it wasn't a choice for me, and frankly, I don't think it's a choice for any American now, um, given the stakes and given how, how significant this threat is.